Welcome back to the Chow Time Pod. It's your host, Red. I got a video today from the Crucible Limited. Awesome channel. They do a lot of debates between uh, men and women and just men and women issues. Uh, this one's uh, it's a doozy. Who gave these women's rights? It was us, the men. <laughs> Please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate that. Let's get to that chow. It's chow time. Yeah, so women uh, women can't make decisions about their own rights because they can't enforce their own rights. So since they, they have no enforcement mechanism other than men, all their rights come from men, so they can't actually be equal. There's always going to be a differential, and that's a necessary. That makes sense. You know, if men weren't part of feminism, feminism would have never taken hold. But there was enough men that said, you know what? Women deserve some of these rights. Women deserve to be able to vote. Women deserve to be able to go to work and things like that. If it wasn't for men or men pushing for these ideas, they wouldn't have happened. You know, and men defend these ideas, right? We still, we allow women to vote. We don't go stop women from voting, you know? No, we just like, you know what? You, you can vote, right? Necessary biological truth. It's not saying that uh, women can't be uh, equal in the eyes of men as far as, um, you know, you, you can't murder them, abuse them, things like this uh, within the commons that you would do with men. But there can't actually be egalitarianism. It's not it's not even possible uh, because women have no enforcement mechanism. So since there's no enforcement mechanism, there's 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 just it's. Yeah, women have no clue where they get their rights from and who actually protects them. It's not you don't protect yourselves. Like women think that strong, being strong and independent, you know, like I could do whatever I want. Like, no, you can't. Men were the ones that let you do whatever you want. If men said you can't do these things, you think you'd be able to just do whatever you want? No. So it's, it's a laughably absurd idea. You have no enforcement mechanism because women's rights are legally created by men. Is that what you mean? What do you mean? Well, by no, they're enforced by men. So. If, so in other words, if men collectively tomorrow say you have no rights, you don't have any anymore. And there's nothing right. you can do about it. There's nothing anybody, any woman anywhere can do about it. Um, yeah. I mean, in the West, they're lucky that men don't really want to harm women like that, in a sense, to take away a lot of these rights or even like rail against things too hard. Men just rather go somewhere else or do somewhere, do, you know, like passport bros right and what can women do about it they can shame us they can you know make TikToks about us but men can do whatever we want we're gonna leave we're gonna leave if men made laws and enforced laws to where men cannot leave this country then yes it can be enforced on us but women what are they doing they just complain and uh bitch about it on TikTok. And men are still doing what they want to do. Yeah, that's just the truth of the world. Uh, if men collectively, and, and we do sometimes, men do anyway. I'm not I'm not grouping myself as a monolith, but men do do this. And in, in some nations, they just say, hey, women don't have rights, and they don't have rights. Yep. There's nothing that they can do. Like the countries where women can't drive. Do you don't like do you think feminism hasn't like touched every single part of the the globe? It has. So a lot of women have known about like women's rights and all these things but some of these countries they don't have it why because these men don't give a fuck about the rights they'd rather they're the ones that enforce the rights so if they don't want to give it to you you ain't getting it do about it how would that happen in america where we do have democracy and we're not just led by i don't know men using their physical who built the democracy and like, enforces it collectively say <laughs> You know what, like half our population, you no longer have rights. You're second well, if men tomorrow say there's no democracy in America, there's no democracy in America tomorrow either. Right. If men tomorrow say that we're going to have a communist nation tomorrow, there will be a communist nation as well. So if men, as, uh, as far as a monolith go, let's say you don't even need 50, 100 percent, but let's just say 30 percent, something. I mean, to say a revolution only requires about 15 percent of the population of the male population to actually incite a revolution. That's what I remember through history class. So I could be wrong, but yeah, only 15% of men is required to start a revolution. That's like how much men can enforce their, their own ideas and their own, 
you know, progression in life is only 15% in a country. Imagine if 50% of men said, you know what, women, fuck feminism. We're taking it away. They really can't do anything about it. Thing like this, say, we don't want democracy anymore. There isn't going to be a democracy anymore. They say they don't want communism. There isn't going to be, or they want communism. That's what it'll be. If they say they want socialism, that's what it'll be. So essentially men are the, the holders of what society is going to look like, what the economic status is going to be, what everything is going to be because they're the enforcement mechanism. Okay. So if that's true, if men are the enforcement mechanism, why does that then mean that women's equality is a bad idea? Well, but I he didn't never say it was that. a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, it is, but what what my position is is that it's laughable that egalitarianism is even possible because women have no way to enforce their rights they have to use men to enforce their rights so since they have to use men to enforce their rights they don't really have any rights because all the rights come from men mm -hmm. guys one quick thing the whole chat is complaining i don't know which one of you guys is typing but the typing noise is really really loud uh i don't know if you yeah can, i like, hear it i hear it too i don't know right. if you can tone down the noise or just uh Keep your computer a little bit far away from your phone. There's just uh, a lot of people. Well, she's shot. on it. Hang on. She's on a cell phone and I'm not typing. So far, are you using your computer to take notes? Yeah, I'm on my I'm on my phone and computer. But oh. he was saying this this whole time. She just sat there just like. Like, bitch, like you're the one that's typing. Fucking fix it. OK, <laughs> maybe you can just uh, like, yeah, move your computer a little bit further from the phone so the audio doesn't come in. OK, OK continue oh that's that's the that's my position it's it's absurd to it's absurd to have any belief in egalitarianism on its face because uh it's not actually possible except through the graciousness of, of men correct it's absurd to have egalitarianism because women cannot physically enforce their own rights you mean yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so egalitarianism is not it's not true it's not real it's false <laughs> It's only possible through uh, men, in other words. It's not possible through women. Women can't be equal unless men allow them to be equal. Correct. Which means it's paradoxical because um, this means that <clears throat> they're never going to be equal because men are going to always be the arbiters of what that equality is because women can't enforce it. So, But why does the notion of egalitarianism have to be predicated on physical strength or like who gets to enforce it? Well, what else could it be predicated on? It's funny. It's like, what do you think the U.S., why do you think the U.S. is so powerful? We have the biggest enforcement arm in the world. We have the largest army. We spend the most money on military. This is why we're able to go to other countries and say, no, you shouldn't be doing this. And they kind of just have to listen. This is why enforcement is so powerful. And this is why enforcement is how laws are like kind of work and how the world works you know and it's funny when women are just like oh but i can do these things no you can't like if you wanted to force something on the nation and the nation of men said no you just can't like if men wanted to go to war right now you best believe we're going to fucking war but if women said i wanted to go to war against this country and men said Nah, you're crazy. We ain't going to war. It's just not how it works. Non. Principles of like what's best for society. And what they're... happens if somebody violates those, those principles? Equal. Correct. Like, why would it be based off the enforcement? What happens if somebody violates those principles? What do you mean? Well, so if you have a society in which you, you have mean? laws and government and things like this and whatever social social contracts you come up with, what happens if one side violates those principles or a person or an individual or a group violates those principles what would you do with them you would well i, I would think arrest them maybe or uh, punish them or do something punitive or put them in prison or something like that and so you're right back to the enforcement mechanism again so there's really no way around it the enforcement mechanism is from men will always be from men and so it's paradoxical to say that women can have equal rights because even if they do have equal rights, it's just because men have allowed them to. Correct. But does that make women's equality laughable? Or yes. like an absurd idea? Well, it's paradoxical on its face, so it has to be laughable. Yeah, because women's rights aren't like predicated on women's ideas. Like, yes, they are, but women can't 
just get those rights out of nowhere because, oh, I want those rights. No, men are just like, you know what? Yeah, I'll give you those rights. Go ahead. And then now women have those rights. Again, this is like so crazy because in other countries, like Middle Eastern countries where women can't drive or do certain things, do you think those women don't want to drive or don't want to do these things? Yeah, they probably, at least some women probably do. But can they? And can they just go to say, you know what? I can drive now because, you know, I want to give that right to myself. No, because the government and the, the people that enforce all those laws are men and said, no, women shouldn't drive. Because there is never going to be such thing as women's equality. Just an illusion thereof, because if it's decided by even a small minority majority of men, my 15 percent minority majority being like 10, 15, 20 percent, they just won't have it anymore and there's nothing they can do about it. So uh, essentially, always they have to defer to men for this. I guess, would you apply the same logic to race? Like if someone's a racial minority and then a larger racial majority just decides like we're going to overpower you physically. If and it's with men, yes. Nope. nope, it wouldn't work the same way. It would just be the same man paradox. Yep. So if men decided to take rights away from a single group of men, they could do that. Yes. But it, let's say if it was a racial minority of women um or something like this that wanted to take away rights or even if it was a racial majority of women who wanted to take away rights from a minority of men they likely couldn't do it nope without using men as enforcement so it's always it always comes back to this no matter what so it'll be in this particular case if you're talking about race it would be yes groups of men can take away rights for whatever reason based on whatever proxy they have from other men and have always been able to do so correct okay i, guess I mean that's what's called war and uh, <laughs> I mean, look at uh, the um, what is that empire? The Roman Empire. It, it was men that were military inclined that were like literally built to destroy other men. And what did they do? They went and controlled as much territory and took as much rights from other men as possible, right? So even other men cannot go against a large group of men. Even a whole nation cannot stop a large enough group of men that wants to take them over. It's just impossible. I guess I just disagree that that makes women's equality laughable because we would need a male. Well, then explain how you can be equal. Because I don't think equality is predicated on physical strength. I don't think equality is necessarily predicated on whether you're able to. It's predicated on ideals and ideals and, you know, my feelings and how I think everything should be fair. No, it's not. So enforce it yourself. Then what's it predicated on? What's a right predicated on? Where do you think a right comes from absent enforcement of the right? I mean, conservatives will argue that, you know, well, now we're going to go some fucking left, you know, right wing shit room have rights, even though they can't physically defend themselves, that they're still worthy of human rights. So uh, what you're saying they there they defend for themselves. So does that mean that, like, mm -hmm. you know, fetuses shouldn't be deserving of human rights if you are pro-life because women could just decide. We never said anything about deserving or not deserving of rights, lady. To just abort them. Like, I just well, so this is this is this is question begging. Right? Yeah, right. So I'm asking you, where do rights come from? And you say, well, conservatives will say that uh, children in the womb have rights. Well, that may be true or may be false, but that doesn't actually answer my question, which I'm asking you, where do you think rights come from? Shout outs to Andrew for uh, shutting her fucking question begging down and just fucking reiterating what the question was and answer my goddamn question, girl. From. Well, I guess what I'm saying is where they don't come from is physical strength. Yeah, I don't care where they don't come from. I didn't ask I you that. I want to know where they do come from. Where do they come from? Um, I guess it's subjective. Like some people think it comes from just a religious sense of you're a person, you're deserving of human rights, you're deserving of... No. See, this is the crazy thing, right? Because if that was the case, then everybody would have human rights in almost every country. Because... People think they're deserving and, you know, of religious or whatever it is. No. Why does America have one of the most rights when America was born? Because America was the most one of the most powerful nations that had the most powerful men that wanted to defend every right possible for us. Right? And it's not saying that women 
don't deserve rights or anything or fetuses don't deserve rights that's not the argument it's the argument is how are these rights established and how are they maintained it's through an enforcement of men or men enforcing these rights and laws or else it'd be lawless prosperity and happiness or you could argue that I guess it depends what you think are fundamental rights, like which well, rights. Well, that's, right. that's the question I'm asking you is if you don't have an explanation or grounding for why you think that people should have rights at all or where rights even come from, then what else could they be other than an enforcement mechanism by groups of people for what they think other people should be allowed to do or not do? Ooh. I don't think because I don't have a clean definition of where rights come from, that means that I have to just defer that rights should just come from who can physically enforce them where else could they come from then if there's no clean definition it means that tyranny is what di dictates rights pretty much well no well in your case for democracy you might say it's a tyranny of majority or yep. you could say uh that it's not a tyranny because it's the majority it wouldn't really matter which way you framed it the truth of the matter is though is that you have to at some some point contend with this issue which is if you don't think that there's a grounding for rights and they're just all subjective based on cultures and people groups and things like this all over the world, that's fair enough. But then you would have to also say in that same breath, if they're all just subjective, then who's giving them to who and who can take them away from who? Mm -hmm. Sure. So I guess rights are established within a civilization. It's or within a usually within national borders. It's decided like what. What do people need in order to have a prosperous life or to have like an equal opportunity? I'm just saying usually the physical enforcement is there to ensure that like to ensure a bottom line, to ensure that people at the bottom, even if they're handicapped, like I just don't understand why this example is uh, you're using it to apply it to women. Well, the Greeks said that uh, without law, there can be no freedom. And what Correct. they're saying there is if you don't have an enforcement arm, for what keeps you free being like things like a military, um, things like police, things that are enforcement laws. In other words, uh, you can't actually enforce any of these rights. How could you, how could you possibly do it? So since men are the enforcement arm, there's really no way out of the fact that you get your rights from them, mm -hmm. whether you like it or not, 100%. you could say that egalitarianism is, as a principle is great, but that really is just begging the question again as to, Who's giving you your rights? You're not giving them to yourself. So in other words, Farah, you didn't wake up one morning with rights with which you gave yourself. Correct. You have rights which other people allow you to have and can easily take away if they so chose and there wouldn't be anything you could do about it. Nope. That's my whole point. Sure. Your entire neighborhood one day can just decide, we hate Andrew. He's annoying. He's not mowing his lawn. Let's go kill him. Does that mean your rights are allowed? Not if they were women. Powered by a large not if they were people? women. She just literally used enforcement. Like if like a, a whole neighborhood wanted to enforce something on one person, yes, because most likely the neighborhood has men, enough men to stop that guy from doing what they want him to do, stop doing. <laughs> they could do that if they were men, though. I agree. I would agree that men could I'm likely. I'm sure 20 women could come and just decide <laughs> we're going to overtake Andrew because he's not mowing his lawn. I think it would be far more difficult for them to enforce it than 20 men. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you agree? And I think that they would probably appeal to men in order to uh, exercise the enforcement. I mean, this is what feminism does now. They appeal to men and get men on their side to build, to, you know, propagate a lot of these things. And it's, yeah, men gave them a lot of these things. Which is what they do right now, which is what women do right now. They, they appeal to men to exercise all enforcement of all of their rights and all of the things that they want. They can't appeal to women because women can't enforce their rights. Right. Like when when we're out with women and they get their asses t grabbed by another man, who enforces like like that interaction afterwards? It's us, the men. Like, what do women want? Oh, you got to defend me. Well, why don't you defend yourself? This is your right to not be grabbed, right? But no, you don't actually defend yourself. It's the man that's with you that has to defend that right for you because he believes, yes, you shouldn't be grabbed like that. <laughs> right. And if never have been able five to. Five women or like three women, two men come tomorrow, kidnap you, just you said tie two men. chair mm -hmm. and start beating you. And I say, oh, well, he can't fight back right now. We're the one who decides if he eats or sleeps or gets water. Does that mean your rights are laughable?
the basis of your rights are laughable, that makes no sense. So what's your, no, 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 and listen, mechanisms listen, are subjective. So if I decide hang on, to hang on. under a tyrannical situation and, and torture you, actually, you're making my point, laughable. pretty you're much making my point for me. So no. if my rights are being violated and I'm unable to physically do something about it, who is so defending his right three for women him. have tied me up. They're now depriving me of life, liberty, and happiness by doing this. And I can't physically do something about this. Who would I appeal to, to do something about this? If you can't appeal to someone, it means the basis of your rights are laughable. Yeah, unless you can tell me what the basis of rights are, which is what I've asked you in the beginning. The legal basis of your rights. Yeah, I know, but what is the the legal basis of the rights? Is the enforcement of the law. In America, it comes from the Constitution, which came from. <gasps> Currently, the Constitution can only be amended legally. Like I don't think men can just overpower that right now we've really? done it before to, uh before in the civil war currently Current currently law, why... all right currently because a lot of weak men and a lot of men are not don't have the balls to be able to stand up to the government and be able to do these things yes i do agree nowadays it's probably not the case but back in the day yeah if a group of men were like what the fuck you know it'd be over <laughs> there'd be some revolution going on but now the government's so powerful, they have, they listen to us, they, they're they able to break up meetings of men and stuff like that. This is why they've weakened men so much and don't want men to come collectively and speak with each other. Because if there's enough men that come together and really wanted to change things, they can. What's the difference between between now and then? They tried to once before. What do you mean? So if they don't like, if men don't like the hand that they've gotten, they don't like the nation that they're in, they don't like the government that they have, they don't like the circumstances they're in collectively, they seem to be able to do something about that. They can overthrow the entire nation, for instance. Mm -hmm. Can you point to a country in history you can ever think of where women have collectively overthrown the nation with force? Okay, so by enforcement mechanism, you don't mean through like legal or civil me measures, you mean through like revolution and those are both physical measures legal me like a legal measure is a physical enforcement how else could it how how else could it work like what would st what stops you from breaking it's funny like the ideals just because you think these laws are whatever it is does not make it so that people can't just break laws people still can break laws even though it was set this is the problem so if you said you can't kill people and people wanted to kill people and you didn't have police to stop people from killing people, you can't stop people from killing people. That's it. But because there's police and and we, we, behind the law to enforce nobody kills each other, that's how we're able to get that law in place and for everybody to be able to follow. Because the the because men make sure that it doesn't happen or at least try their best you know of course murder still happens but without that men like people could do whatever they want if there's no enforcement like it's like religion it's literally like religion right there's no enforcement on religion right so you can be a religious person and they give you all these ideals and laws and like um things to follow but does everybody follow them no why because there's no enforcement most people that are religious actually don't follow the religions to the t or follow things at least that greatly they cherry pick some things right why are they able to do that because there's no police of religions out there saying you know what you didn't pray today you better be praying or else i'm gonna come and find you right there isn't that this is why, like, when she brought up religion, this is exactly what I thought of. No, religion can't be enforced, in a sense, on upon the people. It's uh, their that's their choice to want to follow this religion or not. Making the law, it's a penalty, right? Doesn't somebody enforce the penalty? I'm just saying, revolutions could be spearheaded by anyone. I just don't understand why this is like such. Is she always want, like spearheaded? It doesn't matter who spearheads it. It's men that have to do the work and have to fight so even if a woman spearheaded it there's not a group of women 
that are fighting this. This is th this is your 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 straw man argument. A gendered idea for you that like women's rights are laughable because a majority could overtake them. Like that's the case with any larger group of people. It's not the case. So for instance, let's say you had a dynamic where you had 20% men to a 80% female ratio, the men would still be in charge. Mm -hmm. We know I don't this. Know if that's true. Well, not only can I, uh, I don't know if that's true. Well, if he, if the man said it, he's about to fucking throw some facts in your face. Like this is, Women really don't know how to argue. Demonstrate that this is true by showing you nations post-war, where a lot of the men, up to two-thirds in some cases, were completely wiped out and the men were still in charge. The reason is because even then, the power dynamic is so it's sloped uh, such in the favor of men that women still need them to enforce their rights. Women are unable to physically do this type of work themselves, at least collectively. There might be individual women who are able to be police officers, uh, great military officials, things like this. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm talking about on average and in generalities here. And in general, no, women can't enforce rights and have never been able to. Their rights collectively come from men. Whew. I know that was a long one, but damn. Shout outs to Andrew and Alex for uh, that. That was, that was some good ass fucking talking points. And uh, he's 100% correct. This is why feminism really can't take hold in certain countries because the countries don't allow it. The men in those countries won't allow it. Like in Russia, you know, or South Korea or North Korea, feminism will never work. Do like, you think women can just go out there and just be like, you know what? I don't think I should. I, I should. I deserve food. I deserve basic human rights. And even men. I deserve basic human rights in, in North Korea. There's not enough of them to be able to stop the enforcement arm of the country, right? Which is all men. Please like and subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys next time. Ciao, ciao.